finally done scanning. Let's take a look at the pictures. Jesus, where does all this dust come from? Uh, yellow stains? What? Why is this picture so dark? Why is it blue? <laughs> oh my god, where does all this dust come from? Hey guys, I think anyone who has been scanning with a digital camera for a long time now knows all the references I have made in the intro. I just have to mention dust. So that this not happen to you, I will show you how to avoid the common traps and how to scan your negatives with a digital camera. I will cover all aspects of the skin and what effects they have on your image. If you are tired of waiting for your scanner, then this video is absolutely right for you. Since this will be a relatively long video, we will start right away. I will first list the equipment you absolutely need for scanning. Tripod A tripod has no direct influence on the scan, except for the fact that the camera must be stationary to prevent movement in the image. The only thing your tripod should have is a center column, so you can adjust the height quickly and easily. Which is the case with most tripods anyway. Basically, a normal tripod that you certainly already own is enough. Probably the most comfortable is a riser. But these also take away a lot of space. My recommendation is just use the tripod you already own. Camera. The part of the equipment that I think is the least important. Most cameras have more resolving power than you even need for a 35mm negative even with 15 megapixel. With manual lenses, the camera should support live view. This is a feature to see live how you photograph your negative, so you can adjust and evaluate the sharpness optimally. The camera should also have a form of focus peaking feature, to focus more accurately. However, if you are using an autofocus lens, then even a really old DSLR camera will also do the trick. It makes no difference which sensor size your camera has, so you don't necessarily need a full frame camera. I personally use a Fujifilm camera, because the color science of the camera also partly determine how the final image will look. So like the tripod, a digital camera you already own will be enough. Film holder. This is an important part of the equipment. It determines how fast and clean you can scan the negatives. A film holder should hold the negatives as flat as possible and in a way that you don't have to crop each image individually in post. Also, this part of the gear determines how much fun you have with the whole scanning process. I used to use Lomography digitalizers for scanning and got used to them, but if you don't want to see sprocket holes in your image, I really can't recommend them. Therefore, I approached Veloy and asked for a cooperation. I have kindly received some products, which I can also keep. So that you know quite transparent what is going on here, I'm not paid by Veloy. Everything I say is my own opinion and Veloy will only see the video after publication. Veloy produces the Hasselblad 500cm equivalent of a negative scan holder. Modular, high quality and Scandinavian. The best thing about the system is that you can start small. The system already works if you just buy the scanning holder. With 39 euro you can already start perfectly. You simply push your wall of film into the holder and thus ensure an optimally flat negative that you can scan easily. But voila, it doesn't stop at 35mm. There is also a medium format holder with all the necessary masks for all common formats. Even a great new X-Pen holder, they now have on offer. One day I will buy you X-Pen. For maximum convenience, I can recommend the Advancer. 
With it you can scan a roll of 35mm in record speed. Against unnecessary dust there is also the duster. That already removes the roughest dirt when you use the advancer. Lens Together with the light source, the lens is the most important component in scanning. There are different variants with different quality levels. The most important difference is the quality in the corner of your image. I will now list a few common variants that are most often used. Extension tubes and the native lens. You will have a sharp center but really soft corners. A plus is that it's super cheap, a vintage lens and an adapter somewhat sharp middle and corners, and it's cheap. A cheap native manual macro lens. It's sharp in the middle and has really good corners. It's between cheap and normal priced. And also my recommendation to start. The premium variant is the autofocus macro lens. Everything is sharp, but it's mostly expensive. Here is a picture from a Negative Lab Pro Facebook group that shows roughly what I mean. You should make sure to buy a one-to-one -one macro lens, so that you have the right magnification to fully capture the negative. It also works with one to two, but you have a lot of border in your image. I myself used the 90mm f2 Fuji lens plus extension tubes. That worked perfectly, but the corners were really, really soft. Now I used the 7 Artisan 60mm f2.8 macro Mark I version which gives me extremely good results for the price. The only upgrade I would have left would be the Fuji 80mm f2, but the lens cost over a thousand euro and the 7 Artisans only costs 170 and works just fine. Theoretically there is something for every budget. I can recommend a cheap 7 Artisans lens for the beginning. If you have money left over then you can also buy a more expensive autofocus lens. Light. The light you use for scanning is really important. It should be bright so you have fast shutter speeds and a zero eye above 90, which means that the reproduction quality of the light must have a certain value so that the colors are not distorted. And on the right was through the Veloy but with my old light source that I used to use, even it's perfectly diffused but it doesn't have a great CRI. So what I found is that it was harder to get good colors but you can already see the big improvement by using a diffused light source. If you have a LED light at home, you can check if it has a good CRI value and you can try it. What does not work are lights with two colored LEDs that will look like this. If you need a light to start with, then the Relano will do the trick. You can also combine it with the Veloy set later. Veloy also has a handy light plate to break up light to compensate for uneven lights. But any light source will work as long as it has a good CRI value and it's bright enough. This includes also flashlights. I personally use a Dura LED light plate. Before that I used an IKEA kitchen LED. You can probably imagine that this didn't work out well. Now we come to the critical part of the scanning. This takes me a lot of trial and error to figure out what works and what doesn't. Darken the room. If strong light falls onto your negative, it can cause some flares or color shifts on your image. Clean your work surface. It is best to clean your table with a slightly damp cloth. This will greatly reduce the amount of dust you will find on your negatives. Dust is magically attracted to the negative. Clean the lens and the sensor. With the macro lens, you will see every sensor stain and dirt on the lens. You must avoid this or you will have to retouch it on every picture in post. The best way to do this is with a hand blower. Point your sensor downwards and give it some blows. To clean the lens you have to clean the lens back and the lens front. Light spill from the light tablet. Not only light from the outside can ruin your picture, but also light from your light source. So tape everything off, you don't need to expose your negative. Or you will get some flares in your image. Light spill from the lens. Use a long lens hood to reduce the light spill in your image. 
If you have light spills from whatever source, you can see it as yellow stains or flares. Set up the tripod, preferably at the corner of a table. Use the center pole to find the right position. If the camera position is too short, extend the back legs of the tripod to reach more into the table. With the riser this is probably much easier. I have a standing table, which I can easily change the height. So I don't have to touch the tripod as often. Align the camera. You have to align the camera exactly on two axes with a spirit level or an app on your smartphone. So you hit the film plane exactly and don't create any blur on the edges. This is really important or some part of your negative will be blurred. Align the film holder. Just like the camera, the film holder should also be properly aligned on two axes. Make sure you don't touch the negative with your bare fingers. Gloves are not absolutely necessary, but when handling negatives, you have to be careful as finger grease can ruin your negatives. So only touch the edges of the negative. Dusting the negative. The best way to remove dust from the negative is to use a handheld blower. Simply blow away the dust at the top and under the negative before inserting it. And don't use scanned air. The emotion side must be down. There is absolutely no advantage in doing it the other way around. It's probably an old move from the Epson scanner times. Try to keep the film holder in place. If you use the below advancer, then you can shoot every negative at the same place, which saves a lot of time in post cropping. Try to scan an uncut roll. If your holder allows it, try to scan a whole uncut roll. This will save a lot of time compared to scanning 5 strips in a row. Looking at you, Lumography Digitalizer. What you have to consider may sound a lot at first, but you will get the hang of it. I promise. The next are the pure camera settings you should use. There are no big secrets here. I use my Fujifilm camera in aperture priority. This setting compensates for over and under exposure. I generally set the exposure compensation to plus one so that I can compensate for the darker overexposed negatives that I usually make. This way I don't lose details and nothing burns out. Aperture. I set my lens to f5.6 which is the sharpest area for my particular lens. I recommend that you test yourself with your lens that you bought. Most of the time, the sharpest area is between f4 and f11. ISO. I keep the ISO setting as low as possible. The higher the ISO, the higher the probability that the digital noise mixes with the analog grain. This is to be avoided. However, if your light is not strong enough, you may have to increase the ISO. But this has to be the last thing you do. Right balance. Since we shoot in RAW, it doesn't really matter but I would still set a fixed preset. Shutter speed. The shutter speed depends on the strength of your light. Cameras with IBIS have a little advantage here, since this compensates for small movements. You have to test which speed is right for you and your setup. For my camera with IBIS this would be 1 4th of a second. To reduce additional movement, I recommend using the electronic shutter and a cable release or a smartphone app, so you don't touch the camera. With a manual lens, then you have to adjust the focus. But after that, you have to wait for the camera to stop again. You can see if you've done it right, when the grain of the negative is clear and without blur. RAW or JPEG? You have to shoot in RAW, because it doesn't work with JPEGs. Frame the image. With a real macro lens, it is advised to have a little margin so you have room for trimming and white balance. With the extension ring, I would leave more border because the border is mostly really blurred. Align and focus. If you have your negative flat in your holder as I described, the last part then is you have to adjust the height of the camera. For all those who focus with manual focus lenses like me, I recommend to turn on focus peaking. To focus accurately, you should turn on the magnifying glass and focus until the grain is sharp. 
Just turn the focus ring back and forth until you see that it is sharp. With manual lenses I also recommend refocusing on every single photo, not always necessary but I do it for safety. I also turn my screen to black and white so I can better see what I'm focusing on. Medium format If you want to shoot medium format with your camera, then a good holder is even more important because the size of the medium format negative is more prone to ripples. I photograph a medium format image first like a 35mm negative. Just because of the higher detail density in the medium format image, you can clearly see a difference. If you want to scan a 6x7 photo with one shot, then I recommend a higher resolution camera like the Sony a7R. However, if I want to print the image larger, then I take two images and later merge them as a panorama. So, you have made it through the video. This was everything I know about this topic and summarized as good as I can just for you. I will list all my gear in the info box down below in case you want to look it up again in more detail. If you did everything right, your results should look like this. In the next part I will show you how to get a finished image from the RAW. If you have any questions or tips I haven't listed here, you can write me down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, then please like, share and subscribe and you can donate a roll of film at buy me a coffee. Until the next video guys, take care, bye.